I've been journaling for 1,350 days and I've learned a hell of a lot about myself. Now when I started journaling I was journaling in paper notebooks and I wrote a lot of stuff as you can probably see right there. The thing is I discovered a tiny little problem with these kind of journals. First of all, as the years go by, I'm going to have hundreds of these. Where do I put them? But secondly, and more importantly, is when I'm traveling around the world. Now, I don't travel very often. It is true, probably twice a year. But this going into my flight bag and having to carry it with me wherever I go so I can write, that was becoming a little bit of a difficulty. And I also want to be able to keep a picture of however my day has gone, something from the day. So I stopped writing in these journals. Now I use this. Simple, easy to use, and I always carry it with me wherever I am in the world. And because I have the addition of the keyboard, it means I can type my journal anywhere I am. Plus, I get to be able to do it on my phone as well. Now, this is not about an app. This is more about why you should be journaling and what I've learned over the last 1,350 days. Now, I've always been fascinated with people who journal. Famous people like Virginia Woolf, Oscar Wilde, Robin Sharma, Samuel Pepys. When I was at school, we learned about Samuel Pepys and so many more. I've also loved the political diarist Tony Benn and Alan Clark. Fascinating characters, fascinating time in history. But I think the most important thing about writing a journal is you're keeping a record of your history. The history of you and what you do in your life. And you're living a unique and special life. And it's fascinating. You have a fascinating life wherever you live in the world. Documenting it and keeping a record of what you've done and how you felt and what you really enjoyed about a specific moment. Plus, if you're doing it digitally, you can add photos to every single day. You essentially are building a picture book of your life. And trust me, when you start looking back after 1,350 days or more, you're going to find that actually your life is an amazing adventure. One of the most important things about writing a journal is that you become consistent. And that means you need to first decide when are you going to write your journal. Now you basically have two options. You can write it first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. What I've found through my own experimentation and talking to many of my own clients and friends who also journal is that Writing a journal at the end of the day sounds great on paper, but is actually very difficult to do. You know, you might go out and have a few too many wines. You may have a late night. You might, have, you might just come home completely exhausted. And the thought of sitting down at a keyboard or even picking up your pen and writing is just not on the cards. It's not going to happen. What I've found if you really want to start journaling is do it first thing in the morning. Make it a part of your morning routines. And it is a really special moment when you can just empty your head about what is going on in there. It's your time. It's for you. And it's just you and your journal, which effectively is kind of like your best friend. And that's an important thing to mention. Your journal becomes your best friend. Now, when you first start journaling, it's a bit like when you meet a stranger for the first time. You know, you're a little bit closed up. You don't tell them all your deep thoughts and feelings and emotions. You're a little bit reserved. And that's essentially the same when you start writing a journal. It's like, well, what do I write? I mean, what do people write? Well, when you begin, what I would always suggest is give yourself 10 minutes, just 10 minutes to write. 
Now, you can start off with just writing about what you did yesterday, perhaps write about the weather, maybe write about the two things that you really would like to get done yesterday and whether you did them or not, and also highlight the two things that you want to do today. For example, don't try and go deep and meaningful in those first few weeks. Let your relationship with your journal develop over time because that's what will happen. When I look back at my journal now, I notice that, yeah, the first six months I was quite reserved. I wasn't really writing much about my inner thoughts or feelings. But after six months, I found that I was opening up and I was talking about how I felt about this part of my life or that part of my life. And I started to get much, much more deeper. And one of the things I discovered at this point was writing a journal is absolutely brilliant for your mental health. Let me give you an example of how it can help you when you're going through a difficult time. Wednesday the 27th of October 2021 was probably one of the most traumatic, sad and difficult days I've experienced in the last 20-30 years. That was the day my beloved Barney, my 16-year-old Yorkshire Terrier, passed away. Now in the morning when I woke up I did my journaling as I normally did and I noticed as I looked down that Barney didn't look right. Something wasn't right. Now, remember, Barney was nearly 16 years old and he also, he had a bit of a bad heart. But I thought maybe he was just tired, so I left him for a while and I realised maybe about an hour later, no, something's seriously wrong here. And we ended up taking him to the vet and, well, he didn't survive the day. He went downhill very, very fast. The thing is, it was really difficult that day. And when I woke up the next morning to sit down to write my journal, I really did not want to write. You know, the, the emotion, the feeling, everything was really, really raw. And, you know, I thought, well, of all days, I've got an excuse not to write. But I thought, no, there was a little voice inside me that said, no, no, you've got to write. You've got to, ex you've got to externalize all that built up feeling, all that emotion, all that sadness. You've got to get it out. So I sat down and I wrote. And it took me probably about an hour to write. And as I look back now, I noticed I didn't actually write very much, but I realized, well, it was very difficult and it's even harder when tears are rolling down your face. But the thing is now, 18 months, nearly two years later, I look back and I'm so grateful I wrote that entry. I've now got a record of exactly how I felt when this little one passed away. I mean, he was like my best friend. He'd been with me for pretty much his whole life. And, you know, I can look back now on that day, still with sadness, and it's still difficult to read that entry. But I know in the years to come, that will get easier. And I'll be able to look back and remember the good times we had with Barney because we had so many good times with Barney. And I'm so glad that I've got the, th the two or three years before that of pictures of Barney going out on trips and stuff like that. I mean, I've got record of everything we did in his final years. And so now I realise, and it was that particular moment that I realised that a journal is a wonderful, wonderful thing to start and to maintain. But what about you? How do you feel on your wedding day? If you're not married yet, how will you feel? How do you imagine you're going to feel on your wedding day? Or when your first child is born? Or perhaps when you get the promotion of your dreams? Or the first day you start trading in your business? Now, there's a lot of feeling and emotion on those days that over time, if you don't capture it in the moment, it will disappear. You'll never remember. You'll never get that emotion, that feeling back again. And this is why writing a journal is so good for your mental health, because it's not just about the positive things in your life. It's also about the difficult times, the times you didn't feel particularly happy, the times that you felt anxious, the times that you felt depressed. But you can capture those feelings, get them in your journal, because over time you can go back and reread them and you can see 
patterns developing in your life. And when you can see the patterns, that gives you like the warning sign of saying, look, if you don't change things now, you are going to feel very depressed, very anxious, very unhappy. So a journal isn't just about capturing thoughts, ideas and memories. It's also about helping you to feel much happier with yourself, to give yourself a different perspective on how things will go in your life. It changes everything when you know that you are writing the history of your life and you can look back and you can see the mistakes that you've made and the positive things, the right things, the right decisions. You get to see them every time you read through your journal. Whenever you feel down or depressed, you can open up one of your old journals or if you're digital, you can just go back maybe two or three years and, and look back and say, wow, I was doing that three years ago. Look at me now. And of course, there are some more productive things that you can do with a journal. Often I get asked about how do I track progress on a goal? I would always say, start a journal, write it in your journal. That record will be with you forever that way. Rather than creating a spreadsheet or putting stuff in the notes app, use your journal for that kind of thing. Keep a record, keep a track of what you're doing with your goals. Another one that I would always recommend is when you finish writing your journal in the morning, write out the two things you must do today, the two meaningful objectives that you must do that day. And then the next day when you come back to your journal, look at it and say, did I do them? It's like you have your own purpose-built accountability partner. I use this all the time. It keeps me actually focused on what needs to be done because I know tomorrow morning when I sit down with my journal, I will be looking at what my objectives were for today and if I didn't do them, I have to ask myself, why? What excuse do I have this time? I think the biggest problem that most of us have today is that from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, it's go, 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 go. We never have time to stop and just think for five or ten minutes. Think about our lives instead of worrying about the lives of others like what our boss might think, what our clients might think, what our customers going to be angry, what do my colleagues think. You know today it seems we don't have time to do any of that but if you commit right now to writing a journal for five to ten minutes every morning gives you that, it gives you your life back, it gives you a sense that I know what's happening in my life and you can help use it to help you to make really positive decisions about what you're going to do in the future, about what goals you want to set for yourself, what your vision of the future is, how you're feeling today, how you were feeling last week compared to this week. There's so much that you can put into your journal that you know, once you've gone past three to six months and you've been doing it every single day, I can promise you, you'll never ever want to stop writing your journal. So if I've given you a little bit of an incentive to start writing your journal, then you can choose your options. You can do a digital journal in a notes app. You can use something specific like day one. Or you could use an old traditional way of pen and paper. It's the way I started. But whichever way you do it, the key is to develop the habit of writing. That's the key. Get into the habit of writing your journal. Now, that means that you commit to five to ten minutes every morning before you start the day. Build it into your morning routines. One of my favorite times of the day is writing my journal. I make my coffee, I sit down with my iPad, and I write my journal. And I absolutely love it. It's the favorite time of the day. And while I was recently away on a, on a couple of days break, Every morning when I woke up, I went out to the swimming pool, sat down out there in the sunshine and spent 10 minutes writing my journal. I was writing with a huge smile on my face. It was fantastic. Journaling is one of the best things that you can do. It's not only good for your productivity, it's not only good for your goals, but it's fantastic for your mental health to give you some perspective and more importantly, it builds a story, it documents the story 
of your life. Now, if you want to learn more about how I do my journaling, I strongly recommend that the next video you watch is this one.